I love to be creative with my DIY and today I share with you how I transform these logs into some beautiful items. Creating some DIY pin badges. We always have a large supply of logs for our wood burner and so I wanted to use this resource in a creative way. I use this circular saw but a regular saw works just as well. When doing any projects don't forget the correct safety equipment. These logs are seasoned and dry, but if you don't have these, don't worry, you could always use any timber that you can find. You can of course buy lots of different craft items to make DIY pins, but I like to give myself a little challenge and come up with different creative ways of doing things. Here I'm slicing some really quite thin wooden discs. I love the grain of the wood and there's so many different things we could make out of these. Once I got cutting them, they were really quite addictive and I could cut many. So I will have lots of different craft uses for these and some little tiny logs work really well as well. And here I've experimented with cutting different thicknesses. And here are the slices of the timber planks. I'm fortunate enough to have a laser engraver. You don't absolutely need this for this project, but it does make a world of difference and it does produce fantastic results. My software needs one of the above files, but I'm just going to import a JPEG into my laser box software. And here I'm creating myself a pin badge for our scouting. The orange will engrave and the purple is a cut line and I've just created an outline. The laser will cut the log disc, I'll test to see if it takes two, three or four passes. Decide the size you want your pin to be and then make sure it will fit on your wood disc. Add this to the laser engraving software and we're nearly ready to go. As many of you won't have a laser engraver, I'll give you some other options later. I absolutely love my laser engraver and there's so many possibilities of projects for it and most definitely can you create a business from it. Always make sure you're in a well ventilated area, as you can see here I've brought mine out on a nice day into the garden and make sure you wear the protective goggles as well. And even though you have these on, still don't look directly at the laser. You can change the settings on the laser depending on how dark or light you'd like the engraving. I've gone fairly dark for this one and so it burns a little bit deep and then the cut line goes around. I've selected it to go round four times on this and on the third pass I realised it was burning it too much so I'm going to try another one and I'm going to set the passes to two passes so I'll engrave a second piece of the timber and then I can do two cuts around and this has worked really really well this time and I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. I'm going to go ahead and design a few more pin badges input these into the software and engrave these and cut these once again on the wood. Each one has been taking between two and four minutes to complete. And who would have thought that that piece of log would have turned into something beautiful, but we've not finished yet, we're going to make them really even more special. If you don't have a laser engraver, you can get these tools which are like a pen and you can by hand draw on your design and burn on that design by hand and that works really well as well. The wood on my pin badges is scorched ever so slightly where I don't want it to be so I take a little bit of sandpaper or a sanding block and that removes that slight tint and brings back the nice light wood again. Just make sure you get all of the little bits away before the next step because I'm going to make them shiny and beautiful. The laser engraver did manage to cut through this thicker piece of log, but it did burn it a little slightly. Fine detail can work really well, but just bear this in mind if you do want it to stand out or not so much. Try to make sure you align your design well, as I didn't do so much on this one. But I've spent not much time at all and I've created these lovely examples for you. To finish them you can varnish them or you could spray lacquer them but I like to add a resin top coat to mine. I have a silicon mat here to protect the surface, make sure you do protect everything when working with resin, ensure you follow all safety advice when using any resin and make sure you have that window fully open, you're wearing a mask and you're wearing some gloves. First of all I'll show you the UV resin, this one's quite simple to use and you either need a UV lamp 
or put it in the sunlight to make it harden and go off. I squirt an amount on the top and then smooth it out with a toothpick. Follow the instructions on the pack to cure. If you like doing a project a bit quicker, the UV resin does allow you to move on and create that project a little quicker, but my preference is actually the two-part resin. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So I've added the first coat of the UV resin on and most of it absorbs into the wood. And so then I add a second coat and cure it once again so that I have a much shinier finish there. We'll soon be adding the pin backs onto these to ensure a really professional finish. The backs of my pins always scorch a bit so you can use some sandpaper and rub this away. But what I most often like to do is paint the backs with a small amount of black acrylic paint. Let this dry fully and then we're ready to add the resin. All the products that I use I'll link in the description below. Here I have the two part resin and all you need to do is weigh and measure two equal parts of both of them and then stir them together and then that one is fully ready to use and this is my preferred method. You get nice big bottles of it and there's plenty of there and it goes really far, it really does, especially for this kind of project. The resin has rested and released the bubbles and I like to use this as my adhesive for the pin backs. Firmly press down the pin backs and then I'm going to add some more resin over the top including over the pin back to ensure this sets in place. This takes a full 24 hours to cure so you do need to leave it for that length of time before we turn it over and do the other side. For the fronts I always do one coat which absorbs all the way in and then another coat to dome over the top so you have to let it dry for 24 hours in between each time. It's really handy once we've done the back, so if we're then doing the front, we can add a little plasticine and make it sit on there like that, so we can do that. You might have your different way of doing it, whether you like to do the front face first and then put the pin backs on, but you just find your own way to do them all. But I think this is an absolutely wonderful project and I'm absolutely thrilled that I was able to turn these logs into something absolutely beautiful and I've made these custom pin badges. I've got lots of other ideas and ways to make other different pin badges so please come and take a look. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.